Hey everybody, PCB Junkie back. We're gonna make another RGB modding video today. And uh, what we have here is uh, another Sony Trinitron. This one is a 27 inch. I think the model number is 27KBS42. I know this TV very well, very well indeed. Uh, this was my first TV that I ever bought with my own money. And I think I was uh, in my first year of university. I think it was like 1994, 1995, something like this. And the TV was manufactured, uh, obviously around that same period of time. But uh, let me tell you, this was not a good buy. This TV turned out to be a, a piece of shit. I think it broke three times, four times. Sony had to come in, uh, well at least their service was pretty good, they had the a repairman sent over and uh, they, they replaced the tube, they replaced the main board, I think they replaced the tube again and uh, finally I asked them, after the third time I said uh, guys uh, you know this thing is just not, not the best, uh, please uh, maybe just replace it with something else and they took it away and uh, they told me no we're gonna fix it once once more and I got it back and uh, well it's been working ever since however after about I guess 20 years this was at the, my mom's home and she was using it almost like a like a daily uh, it was it her daily TV the main TV in the living room for a number of years until it uh, it smoked and it died and that was uh, pretty much the last time it's been in use. Now, I uh, I actually went ahead and uh, I did replace a bunch of parts inside of this TV. I replaced the HOT, the horizontal output transistor. I replaced the vertical driver IC and I replaced uh, one of the ICs on the neck of the tube. Uh, and I recapped the whole thing and this was uh, I think about a year ago when I tried to make a video about uh, modding another Sony with uh, the mod chip that I made if you uh, if you'd seen my video where I modded the XPR model uh, this was gonna be a follow-up but uh, you know that was a long year and uh, I had since moved and then I renovated uh, I made myself a workshop which I am in right now and I just had no time to get back to this TV but um, uh, this is gonna change we're gonna make a video on this and we're gonna try to uh, implement that mod chip into this one as well and and see whether we can get the same kind of functionality as we did with the XPR so the reason uh, I'm using this model in particular, well, there, there are two really. Uh, first of all, I'm kind of attached to this TV, a little bit of uh, nostalgia. And um, since I already put so much effort into it, uh, I do want to keep it. I'm not sure why. I mean, I already have plenty of these things, but uh, you know, it's, it's my first TV, right? So yeah, it uh, has a, a special place in my heart, I guess you could say. The second reason is that uh, this is probably going to be another one of those TVs that has a, a secondary RGB input on its uh, YC jungle and I believe that particular input is going to be disabled in software so that's, uh, that's really the main reason why we're going to make a video on this. I'm hoping basically that by the end of this we'll be able to take my mod chip that I developed uh, in the other video which I already made a board for and uh, that thing is pretty much ready and I know I promised you guys that I would release that thing but what I really wanted to do before uh, giving it out to the public making it available was to test it on on one more TV just to make sure that uh, it works as expected so that's really what this video is going to be about now uh, I know I told you I fixed it already but honestly at this point uh, it's been sitting around it got kicked around in the move 
I kind of dropped it so I'm not even sure if it's gonna power on but uh, maybe uh, maybe that's the first thing we need to do just power it on and uh, see if we can get anything to come up at all all right I plug this thing in let's uh, hit the power switch and see whether anything comes up seems to be working yeah look at that well a um, uh, bunch of convergence problems right there and I think uh, we may need to do at least a few adjustments to it now I think what ended up happening is um, let me turn it off first what ended up happening uh, was that um, this thing had its settings wiped so it may be just completely off as far as the uh, settings are concerned and may have to initialize it uh, and the convergence is definitely an issue uh, tell you why when I opened it up last time one of the yoke uh, wedges just uh, got loose and it was sitting on, on top of the board so uh, that's definitely something we'll, we'll probably have to look at uh, to make it a hundred percent but um, I don't want to focus too much on that uh, basically the main goal here is to try out that mod chip and see if we can get this thing to accept RGB got the service manual pulled up and uh, we're on the block diagram page we can see here the YC jungle chip and the microcontroller tuning chip the main brain as they say and the first thing you'll notice is that we have the RGB lines right here R2, G2 and B2 and those are attached to the MICON I'm assuming that's for the on-screen display since we don't like to do the on-screen display method here we're not going to be touching these all right so we'll continue down and we'll look for the other rgb input and uh, there's the rgb output that goes to the neck of the tube and then we have a couple of other control lines and that's about it so that uh that's that's a little misleading I would say as I promised you this thing had a secondary RGB input right so where is it well you'll have to scroll down to the schematics because uh, this particular block diagram omits that secondary RGB input so let's go ahead and scroll down to the schematics and I'll show you exactly what I mean here all right, so here's our jungle again, <clears throat> IC301. And we have the three inputs right there, R2, G2, and B2, our on-screen display, I'm guessing, uh, lines. And then right next to those, we have a R1, R2, and, sorry, R1, G1, and B1 inputs, our secondary RGB port with the appropriate YS control line but as you can see of course nothing is attached so if we've learned anything from the last video that I made whenever there's a Sony jungle that has more than one RGB input and nothing's attached to it then most likely that input has been disabled in software so that's basically my guess that's my theory on this uh, of course we're gonna have to explore that and confirm it and then uh, if that it really is the case I'm going to use the mod chip board that I made and we'll hopefully try to re-enable that secondary RGB input and uh, here is the board of course I'm not gonna be able to get it to focus now but uh, yeah it's uh, that's that's all that's all we have here there's nothing really special to it it's just a socket the microcontroller will go it into that socket and then we have a voltage regulator and a couple of LEDs and then just a, a bunch of headers where we can attach our connection uh, we have the power right there and then the I squared C communication and the YS control line goes in here as well so 
should be pretty simple. Um, I got to find the microcontroller for this, but uh, yeah, uh, we'll get that. Uh, we'll get that ready, and then we'll try to see exactly how this TV behaves. But yeah, that is the plan. So let's uh, let's go ahead and and open that TV up and uh, see what we can find inside. And here's the TV with the cover off. So let's have a look inside. Here is the YC Jungle IC301. Here is the microprocessor, Micon, as, uh, as it was labeled on the service manual schematics. And then there's a couple of other chips here. We have a comb filter and a video switching chip AV switch and then uh, the audio amplifier and really besides that uh, you know most of the other ICs are here just to generate the image on the CRT it's a high voltage section right there so you can see um, all these caps that have a, a black dot they've all those are caps that I've replaced it's uh, all good uh, high quality caps I think most of them are Nishikon Nothing but the best for my baby. And uh, this HOT got replaced as well while I was doing that. Uh, that vertical deflection I see, I believe, is uh, uh, it also got replaced. And then uh, I think I replaced. Yeah, this was uh, this was actually the source of the problem in this TV. This uh, this shorted and uh, prevented the TV from from coming on. But heading back to. Uh, to this jungle don't know if you can see this but there's basically no headers at all where we would be able to we would be able to connect our RGB signal I think uh, the microcontroller just com communicates with the jungle directly through just a bunch of traces and then there's basically no way to interface to that signal so we may need to lift some of those legs from the board and maybe attach our signal that way I'll I'll have to have a, a more detailed look but uh, basically I'm, I'm thinking that that may be the easiest way and uh, that's it so let me flip over the board I'm gonna have a, a better look and uh, see what we can do here and I'll come back and I'll try to come up with a plan as to what we need to do next Here's the uh, solder side of the board and the YC jungle is uh, this chip right here that's in the center of the screen and the, the pins that we're interested in if you remember are these right here 27 uh, so t probably 28, 27, 26 and 25 so I'm not sure if this is very clear or not but uh, basically there's nothing connected to this there are no traces running off to anywhere else so that that figures I mean that was pretty much uh, clear in the in the schematics so I think uh, the best thing here would be now to just attach some sort of a cable and solder it to these uh, pads right there and then we can uh, terminate that cable with a uh, some sort of a plug and then you know that plug can be used to to uh, feed the RGB signal into this chip so I'm um, going to do that next I'm gonna solder a plug to this and then we'll come back we'll try to feed it a an RGB signal and then uh, we'll see what happens alrighty after a little bit of soldering I got all the necessary wires attached so we have the white wire which is the YS line we have the green, blue, and red, which are our RGB colors. I found also a nearby ground right there. And uh, very conveniently for us, here is also the I2C communication lines, labeled as uh, clock and data right there. So if we don't get anything showing on the screen, which I'm guessing is exactly what's going to happen, so we'll have a look at those communication lines next. and. Of course, all these wires are attached to a plug, which I now have ready uh, to be fed our signal into. But one thing that's missing here still is the 
termination resistors and the, the decoupling capacitors but uh, I'm thinking for now before I finalize everything I'll just I'll just put a more to plug yes so just to simplify things a little bit and that's about it so next step will be to feed the signal into this thing and see what happens all right let me show you what I did here I have right here my TV test dongle it's a little battery powered signal generator for testing TVs it's an MSP430 microcontroller based tester uh, it has uh, several modes uh, 240p, 480i and 480p and can output uh, both RGB and composite signals and I use this thing basically to uh, test the TVs that I run into and uh, it's pretty handy because it's portable but uh, anyway uh, I have this thing hooked up through these wires into that little board and that board has the coupling capacitors as well as the termination resistors so I wanted to make sure that the uh, signal is uh, nice and clean before it's fed into the jungle just to make sure we're not missing anything and then I have the sync going into the video one input right there and then as you saw before we have the uh, RGB wires going into the appropriate pins on the YC jungle and the white wire is the YS select line and uh, I had this YS select line attached to the various pins right here we have the ground and the plus five right there and uh, none of this seems to make any difference whatsoever to this TV so now that we've proven that uh, the RGB input is in fact disabled we're gonna hook up the bus pirate and we're gonna have a look at the communication and see whether we can find the old codes that we saw in the other model and if not uh, things are gonna get a little bit more tricky but uh, hopefully I'll be able to find a data sheet and we'll be able to go from there the bus pirate is connected now and I got the terminal up and running let's uh, pull up the sniffer here and we're gonna start the TV let it run for a bit and then we're gonna have a look at the data yep here it comes okay I'm gonna stop it right here and then oh geez okay I'm, I'm gonna go through some of this and hopefully find something of interest and uh, I'll come back and tell you exactly what I found so I took this uh, text and uh, it was very difficult to read in the terminal. I copied it into Notepad so I can search and uh, just uh, basically get a, a better, um, better formatting so it'll be easier to see. And uh, well, there's a whole lot more chatter across the I squared C lines on this particular model. I do see very similar codes. So. In, uh, in the other model, I'm not sure if you'd seen my other video, but the other model had this particular code right here, 880C, and uh, a whole bunch of uh, bits right here that correspond to the RGB register. So 0C had three registers in it. It had the, I think it was the blue cutoff, a die call bit, and also the last two bits of this particular byte where the RGB register settings for the uh, uh, secondary RGB input and uh, the last two bits of this uh, particular byte the 77 tell us that the RGB input has in fact been disabled so this is very good news this is exactly what we what we are expecting to see so now that we've confirmed that the uh, same code exists here and it's set the way we expect it, I guess uh, the last thing to do is uh, to hook up the mod chip to this set and see whether uh, having the mod chip interface that code and change it will allow us to enable the RGB input. All right, let me show you what I got here and uh, then I'll give you the bad news. So I got the mod chip board installed. As you can see, it's seeing I squared C communication and uh, may not be very clear but every so often that red light uh, which is the light that uh, the LED that comes on whenever 
a match is found it does come on so the chip is definitely able to see the code that we were interested in and uh, it does attempt to change it however that doesn't seem to do anything so uh, it turns out that the code that we uh, that we were looking for on this particular YC Django it doesn't seem to do exactly what it did with the other model so that's uh, that's a bit of bad news I'm afraid and uh, what it means then is that uh, every one of these jungles is going to have to have its own code uh, running on the microcontroller in order to enable the RGB. And uh, uh, the difficult part here is that I don't actually have the data sheet for this particular uh, YC jungle used in this chassis. And uh, I looked and I just couldn't find it. So at this point uh, I'm a little stuck. and. Um, what I actually tried doing too to confirm all this was to uh, use the bus pirate to uh, basically try to flip that code manually, and uh, it didn't it didn't actually do anything. And then I also tried uh, to do the same thing for various other codes that I found in other data sheets that I thought may be uh, applicable to this, and that didn't do anything either. So. So it looks like uh, looks like I hit a wall with this, unfortunately, and uh, I guess I'm gonna need to do a little bit more investigating in order to figure out exactly what codes are uh, necessary to turn on that uh, RGB input. Uh, so now I'm uh, I'm gonna jump to my computer and I'm gonna show you exactly what I what I've been able to find, and then uh, I'm actually gonna split this video up into two parts because of the, I guess, the level of difficulty here. So since I can't get this to work, uh, I guess, uh, you know, I, I don't wanna make this video like uh, an hour or two. It doesn't really make sense. So uh, I guess the takeaway here is that uh, the mod chip idea may not be the best idea for these TVs. And uh, I was hoping it would be, but uh, it may not be the case. So. You know that's uh, that's how it is sometimes, right? Uh, you know you can't win them all, right? Okay, let's uh, jump to the computer and I'll show you exactly what uh, what I've been able to find in the various data sheets. All right, let me show you here the data sheet for the CXA fourteen sixty four YC Jungle, and here we have the I squared C communication protocol. Our registers are on the left and then we have the bit uh, layout for each individual function and then let's compare this to the CXA 2150 YC jungle and uh, as you can see this table is completely different there's uh, way more functionality available via the I squared C protocol so that should tell you that uh, there's not gonna be any one particular code uh, that's gonna work across all of these different TVs uh, looks like uh, in order to enable the RGB the unused RGB input we're gonna need to have a different code modified for each uh, individual YC jungle or perhaps just for a, a family of, of these YC jungles so at this point uh, makes this a whole lot more difficult and uh, now you have to wonder whether you know, doing this mod chip is uh, is even a good idea because it may just be easier to do the mod via the uh, on-screen display snip method, and uh, you know it's quick and easy, and then you're done instead of messing around with uh, with all this. But uh, I'm not giving up quite yet. I'm I'm still gonna explore this, and then uh, I'll try to make another video on this uh, once I find out a little bit more information on the subject. All right, let me show you what I mean here. So we have a number of uh, different data sheets uh, for Sony YC Jungle ICs and um, as you can see there, there are a couple that have very similar model number. Okay, so the ones that we're interested in are these ones. So 2131, 2133, and 2139. And if you look at this, this is the one that we have in, in this TV right here in the uh, uh, KB27S42. And uh, this should look all very familiar. 
it's the same uh, screenshot from the data sheet uh, that I showed you earlier for the chassis okay and uh, if we look at the 59 you will see that it's exactly the same pinout right so these uh, these should share the same exact uh, I squared C communication protocol I'm assuming so it would be uh, it would be good if I could uh, get my hands on the data sheet but unfortunately I looked for over over half a day and I just couldn't find it all I was able to find was just uh, some pinouts and um, some other data sheet for other chips but uh, as you can see this one is a little bit different even though the model number is uh, similar so yeah um, definitely the I squared C communication protocol here in this one is not going to be compatible I uh, verify cross-referenced uh, against uh, what I saw in the um, in the I squared C dumps and uh, it certainly doesn't look like it's it's the right chip so so we're looking for the uh, data sheet for the uh, 2131 2133 2139 or 2159 if I can get my hands on this uh, that would make my work a lot easier and if I can't then uh, basically I'm just gonna script some sort of a, a way to to dump a whole bunch of various uh, codes into the YC jungle and uh, I'm gonna see if I can get the uh, the RGB input to turn on just by randomly spamming it with uh, with random code so that's gonna be my next plan but uh, of course if I'm gonna do that uh, it's gonna take a lot of time and I'm honestly at this point uh, not looking forward to that so if I can avoid it that would be great and uh, I guess this is where I'm gonna end this video right here because uh, at this point it doesn't look like a like doing what I thought was gonna be easy is gonna work out so uh, unfortunately it looks like the uh, I squared C communication across all these chips is a little bit different and uh, there's not gonna be one single Sony mod chip like I initially thought so so that's it that's gonna be it for for this part of this video uh, I'm gonna leave the rest of it for part two. I am still pretty much uh, set on uh, getting this to work no matter what, but uh, just uh, it depends how. All right, so don't wanna don't wanna keep this video too long, and uh, that's why I'm gonna split it up into two parts. So if you guys can uh, find this data sheet for me, let me know. Otherwise, uh, yeah, I guess uh, a lot of difficult work ahead. All right, uh, if you enjoyed this, you know what to do. Thanks for watching. I'll see you all on the next one. Bye now.